In this video, I'm going to be sharing some tips that I've picked up over the years when it comes to preventing swirl marks and scratches when detailing a car. And my hope is that whether you're a complete beginner or have been doing detailing for a little while now, that there'll be something useful that you can take away from this video. Now, the key thing that I keep in mind when preventing swirl marks and scratches is that I'm trying to limit the amount of friction on the paintwork as much as possible throughout the wash process. I think there are two main ways that this friction can actually occur. Firstly, it can be with the actual tools that you're using to make contact with the car during this process. And secondly, the dirt that's actually on the car can also act as an abrasive and create that friction as well. So what I'm going to be doing is considering both of these aspects and taking you through some tips that helps reduce the amount of friction and abrasion from both of those sources. Without a doubt, one of the best ways to reduce scratches throughout the wash process is to try and get as much dirt as possible off the car before making contacts with your wash mitt. Just rinsing the car down with water prior to cleaning the vehicle isn't enough to remove all that traffic film and dirt build up and instead it's best to use a chemical to aid this process. Now there are three main types of chemical that are typically used for this process. There's traffic film removers, citrus pre-washes and snow foams. Now traffic film removers are the most powerful of the three and are highly effective at removing as much dirt as possible from the vehicle. However, they are usually caustic, which isn't great for the paintwork and also the other exterior surfaces like the trim. And it can cause them to fade over time and even promote rusting. So I don't typically tend to use this option and it's really used as a last resort. Citrus pre-washes are also very effective, but generally aren't quite as aggressive as traffic film removers. So the risks are reduced. Some of my favorite citrus pre-washes to use are the Squid Ink Citrus, Yum Citrus, and also ODK's Breakdown Citrus as well. And I find these all work really well to pre-wash a car, even if it's not been very well maintained in the past. Snow foams are generally the weakest option of the three. However, they can still be a great option to go for if the car already has some protection on it and is relatively well maintained. There are two main types of snow foam, those being alkaline and pH neutral. Alkaline snow foams are more powerful in general and my favourite to use is Squid Ink Alka Froth as this does a great job at cleaning. However, if you're only dealing with light dust and dirt on a well-maintained car, then a pH neutral snow foam can still be effective and get the car clean enough for the contact part of the wash. Now, actually, one of my favourite ways to pre-wash a car is to combine those last two options and to use a citrus pre-wash on the dirtiest areas of the car and then layer up a snow foam over the top and I find that this does a really great job on most vehicles. Typically, all these pre-wash chemicals work best when applied to a dry surface, so there's generally not a need to rinse the car down before applying them. You just need to give them a thorough rinse afterwards. Once the car has been thoroughly pre-washed, it's time to actually make contact with the paintwork, and there are some things that I keep in mind to help reduce the risk of inflicting scratches during this stage, as this is where there's a high risk of it happening. Now I think it should hopefully go without saying that using a high quality shampoo at this stage is absolutely essential and the main thing to look for really is a good level of lubrication as this is what's going to allow you to effectively remove any remaining traffic film in the safest way possible. Some of my favourite car shampoos to use are the Garage Therapy One Car Shampoo, Squid Ink HD Pure and Pyramid Car Care's Revival. Going back to what I said at the start of the video in that the tools that you use to clean the car are one potential cause of scratches, I think that using high quality wash media at this stage is absolutely essential. Now I always go for a good quality wash mitt here, I'm not a fan of sponges, especially the really cheap 99p ones. I know that some detailing brands in the past few years have come out with sponges that are designed to be safe on paintwork, I haven't tried them personally although I know a lot of people swear by them, but like I said I do just prefer to go with a microfiber wash mitt. If you've seen my previous videos, you'll notice that I generally use the ones from the Rag Company as these hold a lot of suds and also remain very soft after multiple washes. I've been using the same wash mitt on my car for over a year now and it's been through over 50 wash cycles and still feels really nice and soft. Now when it comes to contact washing the car, there are some different methods that you can go for. One of the most popular is the two bucket method which involves having one bucket which is filled with the wash solution and another that's filled with clean water which is used to rinse out the mitt in between each panel. A couple of things to keep in mind if you use this method is it's a good idea to use large buckets so ideally around 20 litres as having more wash and rinse solution in those buckets is going to essentially decrease the amount of dirt concentration in them so you're less likely to recollect it onto your wash mitt. 
It's also a very good idea to use grit guards at the bottom of those buckets to help keep that dirt underneath them so it's not swirling around in that water as much. Another alternative contact wash method, which I do personally prefer when I'm dealing with soft paintwork, which is more prone to scratching and swirl marks, is to actually apply the shampoo using a foam cannon and then have a separate rinse bucket to rinse my mitt out in between each panel. The reason I really like this method is it actually helps to increase the lubrication as you've got a good layer of that shampoo already on the car and you still can keep that mitt nice and clean by rinsing it out in between each panel, the same as you would with the two bucket method. I find that most shampoos work well in the foam cannon at a roughly one to nine dilution and generally I can get away with covering most vehicles with around 300ml of total solution in the foam cannon, bringing the amount of shampoo that I'm using per wash to just 30ml so it's not really any less economical than the two bucket method. With either of those two methods, I think it's a good idea to have an extra mitt or two on hand so you can use them for the dirtiest parts of the car and avoid cross-contaminating too much. I also work from top to bottom when cleaning the car as again, those lower sections are dirtier. So you don't want to be collecting dirt from those areas and essentially rubbing them into the cleaner ones as that will increase the risk of damage. Once the car is clean, that doesn't mean that you're out of the woods yet in terms of potentially causing some scratches and swirls as the drying stage is another potential source of these problems. The best way to absolutely eliminate any chance of scratches at this stage is to actually use a car dryer here as this is a no contact drying method so there really is no risk of damage. The disadvantage of that method though is of course it requires an extra piece of equipment that is pretty pricey and it does add some time to the drying process. If you're going to go for the more traditional option of using a drying towel it is a good idea to make sure that the towel is dampened by either using it to dry the windows prior to touching the paintwork or by using some kind of quick detailer or drying aid as the chances of marring the paintwork are a bit higher if you're using a completely dry towel. There are also a few different types of drying towel on the market. There are the classic twisted loop drying towels that most companies tend to offer. And there are also some softer and plusher options. Now the advantage of a twist loop drying towel is that it is more absorbent. However, it isn't as soft, so there is a little bit more of an increased risk of marring if you are dealing with very sensitive paintwork. If that is a concern, then I'd suggest going for something a bit softer and plusher. So on my own car, I use the Rag Company's Dryer Wolf microfiber drying towel. And this is very plush and soft, so ideal for those more delicate paintworks. Also, it's worth considering using the drying towel to actually pat the car dry rather than drag it along the surface. The reason being is that there is potential for any dust and debris to kind of flow onto the car after you've done washing it but before you've started drying it. And by dragging the towel across that panel, there is some potential for it to cause damage. Whereas when you're patting the car dry, although this method takes longer, there's no real movement of the towel, so it is a safer option. When actually protecting the car with any kind of wax and sealant, there also is a risk here that some scratches and marring can occur as you are making contacts with the paintwork with a very limited amount of lubrication. This is typically caused by the tools that are being used, but sometimes the technique as well. I always make sure to use very high quality microfiber or foam pads if I'm using a wax. And I always make sure to inspect them thoroughly first by just running my hand along each side to check that they're completely free from any debris that might have, say, been picked up when washing them. It's also a good idea to store them in plastic bags or containers so that no dust is going to settle on them between use. One thing to keep an eye out for when actually purchasing microfiber towels is the blend. And the most popular blends for car detailing towels are 80-20 and 70-30, with the smaller number referring to the content of polyamide and the larger number referring to the content of polyester. Now, out of those two components, polyamide is the softer and more absorbent, so a 70-30 blend is a better option to go for if you're working on soft paintwork. When I'm buying new car detailing towels, I always look out for that blend. And if I'm going to be using it for the finishing stage, then I always opt for that 70-30 blend. If the company isn't listening on the website, I simply just won't choose it. A couple of my favourite towels for this stage are the Rag Company Eagle Air Trust 500, which is a really thick plush towel. This is ideal for applying quick detailers or removing waxes that are very easy to buff off. With it being a thicker and plusher towel, it does help to reduce the amount of pressure points that you're putting on the panel. However, if I am dealing with a sealant or a wax that's a little bit tougher to remove, then I will go for something with a bit more bite, such as the Edgeless 365, as this is still soft but just slightly more effective at removing more stubborn residues. If you are struggling to remove any wax or sealant residue, just try and avoid putting too much pressure on the panel. You should just be using very light pressure and as little as possible, really. 
if you're struggling to remove the residue without using excess pressure, then you can actually try applying a little bit more of the wax or sealant over the top. And sometimes the solvents in that can actually help to remove the residue. Or you can dampen the microfiber towel or use a little bit of quick detailer to help with this process. It's also absolutely essential that you take proper care of the microfiber, as there are actually quite a few mistakes that can be made when washing them. Firstly, microfiber really doesn't like heat and it can cause the fibers to melt and harden. So put them on a low temperature like 30 or 40 degrees when washing them and don't stick them on high heat in a dryer or on a radiator. You should also never use washing powder with microfiber towels as this often doesn't dissolve fully and those undissolved particles will make the towel abrasive. So go for non-bio liquid or a dedicated microfiber detergent instead. And never use any fabric softener as this will clog up the fibers too. You should also wash microfiber towels separately to any other kinds of fabric otherwise you'll end up with loads of lint all over your towels and I also like to separate my really dirty and clean microfiber towels so that they don't get cross-contaminated during the wash. So this isn't an exhaustive list of scratch prevention tips so if there are any tips you'd like to share please drop a comment with them below. If you have enjoyed the video it'd be great if you could drop it a like and thanks for watching.